against Michael Myers. Officer Hawkins, tell me what happened in here. Tell me what happened. Did Michael kill? Did Michael kill again? Jason, what the heck are you doing here? Come on, man, get out of here. Your review's not until later. Okay, let me start over. This is Terminator Plays with another Spooktober entry and another review. Today, we're going to be looking at the Halloween Kills Michael Myers based on, of course, Michael Myers from Halloween Kills, which came out last year. The figure also coming out last year. Both sides of the box sport that Halloween Kills logo with the NECA logo, as well as that super sweet and eerie artwork of Michael and his burnt mask. As is always the case with neck figures, a quick flip round to the back of the box gives us some lovely shots of the figure inside, alongside his many weapons of mass murder. How cute. Come back round to the front of the box, we get that lovely profile shot of Michael's mask, and then of course we get that flap opening, and we reveal the shape, Michael Myers himself, with some awesome accessories and an awesome shot of him just standing there doing his trademark creepy stare. As always, it does a brilliant job of selling the figure inside. As some of you may know, NECA figures come with a whole host of accessories, and this Michael figure definitely does not drop the ball. He comes with some really neat stuff, such as an interchangeable eyes blacked out head, if that takes your fancy, as well as some lovely tools of murder, and a baseball bat. Michael also comes with this super cool bashed in silver shamrock mask, because he had enough of those fucking commercials. And I'd say he's right to be annoyed. Continuing onwards, let us get this beauty of a monster out of the box. And here he is, Michael fucking Myers, out of the box. And boy oh boy, what an absolute piece of eye candy this guy is. As explained earlier, he comes with a whole host of different murder weapons, which are each references to different scenes from the film, and equally will make him look terrifying, just as he's always meant to be. Speaking of terrifying, how about we take a look at his first weapon of choice, the fluorescent light bulb. This weapon is a reference to one of my favourite scenes in the film, which is one of the most gruesome, in which Michael kills women by using the fluorescent light bulb, smashing it on the counter, and then jabbing it in her neck. With lovely attention to detail with the prongs, blood, and smash glass. That can never really do beat around the bush. He also comes with a wooden baseball bat, which to me looks like the Sandman from TF2. That aside though, it's a surprise to be sure, but a welcome one that they included this accessory, as it was mostly featured with Tommy in the film, then towards the end of the film in the mob beatdown. That leads me on to details. Lovely wood texture, as you can see here, and love the old worn look it has to it. However, they are missing the old huckleberry text on the side of the bat, but hey, at least you get some sweet poses with this thing, and there's also nothing a quick paint or two can't fix, right? <sighs> and now onto what is possibly my most favourite weapon with this figure, and that comes with this figure in general. 
that being the Halligan Bar. And you may be wondering, what the hell is the Halligan Bar? Well, it's this beauty of a thing that he uses to murder several firefighters both in the trailer and in the film. There's also some lovely detailing on this thing, with that amazing blood detailing on each prong at the head of the bar from where Michael killed those first few firefighters, as well as this lovely black wash over the silver paint, making it look like ash and muck from Michael and the burning house has settled onto it. It helps highlight those little ridges on the handle quite well. Also, there's this lovely chunky bit at the end. Looks cool, but lethal. I'll probably display him with this in hand. Next up, we have Michael's signature weapon, the kitchen knife. Now, due to the difference between the two knives, I initially believed that they were Little John and Big John's knives, the gay couple living in Michael's house from the film. Though as you can see here, Big John has a much much smaller knife, whereas Little John has a much more regular sized kitchen knife, probably the one that we see on the right. The knife is another simplistic yet essential piece to Michael, as it's his trademark weapon, with some lovely details thrown in there for such a small piece, such as this lovely sort of shine that we can see here on the blade. Looks oddly realistic for plastic. There's also this lovely layered effect on the handle, which makes it look like a real knife too. This is also seen on the bloody knife. Speaking of the bloody knife... This is similar yet different to the previous knife that we just saw, with some lovely blood detailing on the blade, with a lovely mix of crimsons and bright reds, which actually leads me to believe that this is the knife from the same break-in scene where he uses the fluorescent bulb to kill the woman. Next up, we have the Silver Shamrock Trick or Treater Mask. Oh boy, this is actually a really lovely piece. Now as you can see here, this is a hollow mask, so unfortunately, it isn't fully compatible with the Silver Shamrock pack. But it still fits on head joints, as you can see here. Dang, it looks like some sort of Ghost Rider knockoff. Love the detailing all over and how it looks like an actual little latex mask. Also, gotta love that blood on the top of the mask. Fucking sweet. Also, gotta love the little Silver Shamrock logo on the back. Love the attention to detail here. Next up, we have the interchangeable head that Michael comes with. Now, at first glance, there may be nothing that's too significant of a difference here, but let me just start out with the positives. The amount of detail on both head sculpts alongside that burnt latex look is just fucking immaculate. In my opinion, this is the best Michael figure that NECA have released, far surpassing Halloween 2018 in my opinion, and don't get me wrong, that was a beautiful figure, but this mwah, just takes the cake. There does seem to be less blood detailing on the eyes blacked out sculpt, but eh, it's no biggie. Also, I love how subtle his eyes look in the mask, and how they've actually been put further back. It's just like the real thing, it's just ugh, so fucking cool! He comes with a pair of interchangeable hands for his left hand, because, you know, everybody needs a helping hand every now and then. In true Necker spirit, there is brilliant paint apps, brilliant sculpt, and brilliant lifelike likeness. Just amazing. This pinch hand can also allow you to create that weirdly excited look that Michael had during the scene where he was stabbing the guy with multiple knives, which probably is one of the most creepiest scenes in the film for me. Now, with the tools of murder done and laid to rest, it's time to take a look at the shape himself. Yes, this is a reuse of the 2018 figure for the most part, such as here in the legs, but that doesn't take away at all from just how impeccable the detailing is here. The wrinkles and creases in the clothing are brilliant, and it's just such a perfect look for this embodiment of evil, all messed up, even including some bullet holes. Speaking of messed up, let's address the elephant in the room. On one side, Michael is awfully burnt up, and the detailing for the charred fabric here is great. It's uneven, it's messy, it's that lovely charcoal colour. There's even a slash mark on his arm. Gross, but cool looking. The boiler suit is also a darker colour compared to its 2018 predecessor. Definitely looks better. And speaking of more detail than its 2018 predecessor, the mask is the same. Just fucking beautiful. Articulation time. Michael can do a full exorcist twist with his head and move his arms to 45 degrees at the side. The arms can rotate 365 degrees at the shoulders, as well as bending to 90 degrees, but thanks to double articulation, can move a further 45 degrees, giving this guy some sweet poses on your shelf. He also has a good range of articulation in his hand, with some rotation and swivels. Michael's legs can also move out to 50 degrees at least, with his legs having a good range of motion, a 90 degree bend forwards, a 90 degree bend at the knee, 90 degree rotation to each side, then 30 or so degrees backwards. For someone who's a house fire victim, he sure can move. Last up, his feet. They have a full 360 degree rotation, as well as some minor swiveling capabilities. Standing him next to his former self and enemy, both Michael stand at 7 inches, with Laurie standing at 6.1 inches tall. Closing thoughts. I love it. It's worth every penny you spend on it. It's the perfect Michael figure to me. It comes with weapons galore, some lovely accessories packed with detail, it's got unbeatable detail and posing, and is all round a solid 10 out of 10 figure. Perfect for any horror fan, Halloween fan, or someone looking to pick up something for the spooky season. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are down below. What do you think of Halloween Kills? Or Ends?
But until next time, that has been Terminator Plays.